10. Underwater Military Museum In a bid to attract tourists, the Jordanian government lowered 19 decommissioned military vehicles into the Red Sea, near the city of Aqaba in 2019. The collection of drowned machinery includes tanks, an ambulance, a military crane, a troop carrier, a combat helicopter, an anti-aircraft battery, and several large guns. They can be found 92 feet beneath the water's surface, where they sit arranged in tactical formation. In recent years, the Akaba Special Economic Zone Authority ASEZA, has found a new way to generate revenue. In 2020, their first ever underwater military museum was created as a unique diving experience for tourists. The idea was bolstered by the Jordanian royal family, inspired by their generational passion for diving. Not all the vehicles are military equipment, and some of them have been there since long before the museum was put together. In 1985, the late King Abdullah ordered the sinking of the Spanish cargo ship Cedar Bride. Three years earlier, an accident blasted a hole in the vessel, leaving it as a half-submerged eyesore until the king decided there was a better place for it. In 1999, an anti-aircraft tank became Akaba's second intentionally placed wreck. 9. Thailand Tank Dump In 2010, a photo of a tank being dumped off the side of a ship emerged online. Initially, this caused some people to wonder if someone had gotten away with polluting the environment. It's a fair cause for concern, especially in an age where marine pollution is wreaking havoc on ocean life. Luckily, this wasn't the case. As it turned out, the whole thing was orchestrated in order to hopefully improve the ecosystem's fish stocks. The photo was taken when a total of 25 old military tanks and trucks were dumped into the water near the Gulf of Thailand. The goal of this action is to create an artificial reef with the hopes that corals will eventually form on them. This would, in turn, help to restore the region's ailing fish populations off the Narathiwat province coast. 8. D-Day In the early morning hours of June 6, 1944, Allied troops stormed the coast of Normandy, France, on a mission to free the country from Nazi control. This day would famously come to be known as D-Day. It was one of the largest amphibious invasions, and it was the largest seaborne invasion in history. The campaign was successful, marking the beginning of the end of the war. However, victory came at a cost for the Allies and not everything went according to plan. In fact, some things went wrong right from the beginning. A fleet of 29 amphibious tanks, known as duplex drive tanks or DD Shermans, were outfitted with flotation devices designed to enable soldiers to steer them to shore. Unfortunately, these modified vehicles were only equipped to withstand one-foot swells, and the seas were much rougher than that. The tanks were no match against the six-foot waves they encountered. Most of the drivers were still about 0.6 miles away from the beach after trying their best to reach dry land. Only two of the tanks actually made it to shore. Archaeologists explored the area's waters for the first time in the year 2000. They found some of these doomed machines sitting upright, while others were on their side along the ocean floor. These tanks represent just a small portion of the losses the Allies experienced during D-Day. 7. Marlin Head Graveyard The waters off Ireland's most northerly point, known as Marlin Head, were once a popular navigation route for convoys during both world wars. As a result, the region became a major graveyard for wartime wrecks. Included among the submerged vehicles is the HMS Audacious, the first British battleship that was lost in World War I. It was built between 1910 and 1913 for the Royal Navy. Its career was short-lived, because in October 1914, the ship was sunk by a German naval mine off the Donegal coast. Built as a super dreadnought for the Royal Navy, the Audacious was a beefed-up version of the original 1906 dreadnought design. This sparked a pre-war arms race between Britain and Germany. It was well-armed, but it proved to be no match against the mine that blew it up. The explosion sent the ship plunging 213 feet to the seabed below. Another major wreck that can be found near Marlin's Head is the SS Empire Heritage. Originally built as a British whaling ship, it was later converted into a tanker. It was carrying 16,000 tons of fuel, as well as various military vehicles, including Sherman tanks and trucks. Then, in September 1944, the vessel was struck by a German U-boat torpedo, sending it to a watery grave. 
The ship and the vehicle sank to the seafloor, but were rediscovered in 1995. They remain in the sign today as an eerie reminder of a bygone era that saw countless countries in conflict with one another. 6. USS Spiegel Grove The 510-foot-long U.S. Navy dock landing ship, known as the USS Spiegel Grove, was built in the mid-1950s. She never saw actual combat, but had an active career traveling all over the world. The vessel sailed to Guantanamo Bay for its shakedown cruise, before participating in amphibious training exercises off the coast of Onslow Beach, North Carolina. After that, Spiegel Grove completed a six-month tour in the Mediterranean. For the next several years, the ship spent most of its time primarily along the North American East Coast and in the Caribbean. In 1961, the ship embarked on a four-month-long goodwill tour to Africa with medical supplies, toys, books, seeds, food, and disaster supplies at the ready. Along this journey, it stopped in Gambia, South Africa, the Seychelles, Kenya, Togo, Gabon, and Zanzibar before it returned home on September 8th. Then, in January of the next year, she traveled to Virginia in order to complete an overhaul done by the Horn Brothers shipyard. In 1974, the vessel helped to evacuate hundreds of Americans from Cyprus following a historic coup that's kept the island nation divided ever since. Two years later, the ship participated in another civilian evacuation mission called Operation Fluid Drive. This time, the vessel's crew helped to rescue Americans from Lebanon after civil war broke out in the country. Spiegel Grove was taken out of service in October of 1989. After years of running into financial problems and legal red tape, it was towed from Virginia to Florida in 2002 and sunk off Key Largo. It sank too fast and landed upside down on the ocean floor, but was turned on its starboard side by the military several months later at an immense six-cost figure. Today, the wreck functions as an artificial reef for wildlife and remains a popular diving site for tourists and adrenaline junkies. Would you rather explore the underwater wreckage of a World War II ship or discover the remains of a never-before-seen plane crash? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe! 5. Discarded Tanks in Papua New Guinea In 2010, a pair of World War II-era tanks were found in the shallow waters off Papua New Guinea. They sat just 13 feet beneath the surface, yet been largely forgotten about for more than 60 years. In fact, it's believed that they'd sat, untouched, in the Makada Harbor until Swiss diver Franco Banfi discovered them. Each tank weighs around 15 tons and is equipped with a once-functional cannon and two machine guns. These long-forgotten vehicles are remnants of a time when tanks helped to turn the conflict in the Allies' favor. They played a role in several important battles, including the New Guinea Campaign in the South Pacific. The campaign began in 1942, when the Japanese invaded Papua and New Guinea, and lasted until the very end of the war in 1945, which is when the tanks were dumped into the water. This was a popular way for Americans to get rid of vehicles and equipment throughout the South Pacific that they no longer needed. A lot of the time, the vehicles were in perfectly good condition, but it simply wasn't worth the cost of relocating the surplus back to the US. 4. Saipan's War Machines Saipan is part of the Commonwealth of the US and is located roughly 5,900 miles from the American mainland. This Pacific paradise is the largest of the Mariana Islands, and during World War II, it was under Japanese control. From June 15th to July 9th, 1944, a brutal weeks-long battle between the US and Japanese forces took place. In the end, America was victorious and captured Saipan to claim as their own. Since then, numerous historic vehicles from both sides have sat in the waters off the island. The submerged wrecks include two Japanese planes, two American planes, several merchant ships, some landing vehicles, as well as other machines. Some of these vehicles were destroyed in combat and sank while others were deliberately dumped into the water at the end of the war. One of the most famous Saipan wrecks is the Shoan Maru, a Japanese transport ship which now sits at a depth of roughly 30 feet. It's one of the many diving attractions around the island. Most of the dives are accessible to entry-level divers. However, for those with more experience, there's a submerged pile of World War II-era junk sitting at the bottom of the water. Jeeps, airplane parts, and other discarded items that the Americans tossed when the war ended can be found here. 3. World's Largest Submerged Plane 
In 2016, an Airbus A300 cargo plane was deliberately sunk off the coast of Kusadasi, a city in western Turkey. The aircraft had recently retired after a long career in the sky, before plunging to its final resting place off the Aegean coast, where it functions as an artificial reef for marine life. Measuring 177 feet, 54 meters from nose to tail, and with a wingspan of 144 feet, the A300 is the world's largest submerged airplane. Turkish officials made the decision to sink it in order to increase tourism to the region by turning it into a dive site. In the handful of years since the aircraft was relocated, it's now covered in coral and is quickly turning into a thriving aquatic habitat. As it turns out, the move to boost tourism worked. Diving has increased noticeably in the region, and it's all due to the rare and unique opportunity to see fish and other creatures living in and around a cargo plane. 2. Chuk Lagoon During World War II, Japan's main naval base was located roughly 970 nautical miles northwest of New Guinea in the South Pacific. Known today as Chute Lagoon, this area contains an eerie graveyard of war machines, including a ghost fleet of Imperial Japanese ships, tanks, and planes. The vehicle sank in February 1944 during a massive air and sea attack that the US Navy launched against the Japanese, known as Operation Hailstone. Altogether, over 200 planes and at least 40 marine vessels were destroyed. Since then, the vehicle cemetery at Chute Lagoon, formerly known as Truck Lagoon, is now a popular diving site. Experienced divers are capable of entering depths where they're likely to discover things they've never seen before. The graveyard contains a plethora of military and everyday items, such as medicine bottles, plates, shoes, battery guns, ammunition, and gun masks. 1. SS Probitas Towards the tail end of World War I, the SS Probitas, an Italian diesel-powered cargo ship, was built in 1918. Interestingly, after many years in service, the ship even went on to assist in World War II. However, all things must eventually come to an end. It was ultimately sank by the Germans during an air raid off the Albanian coast on September 25, 1943. The 377-foot vessel sank to its final resting place below the Bay of Saranda. The ship remains on its port side and is still visible at the site today. The SS Probitas sits less than 1,000 feet, 300 meters from the shoreline, and lies at a maximum depth of 59 feet below the water. At its shallowest point, the ship is just 10 feet from the surface, making certain parts of the wreck easy to spot with an aerial view. In order to signal danger underneath the waves, the Probitas is marked above the water with a cardinal buoy. It's a popular diving site for thrill-seekers, and the visibility around the wreckage is decent, at about just under 66 feet. Thanks for watching. Do you think we should continue dropping vessels into the ocean in order to restore underwater ecosystems? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.